hallelujah. All the church said hallelujah. 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 Come on and lift your hands before the Lord our God this morning. Glory to your name, God. Our lifting of our hands is an act of submission unto our God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Father, it's in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that the people of God has come to be able to hear from heaven today. I pray, Father, that the words of my mouth, that the meditation of my heart, that we as a body of Christ are acceptable unto you. You are the Lord our strength. You are our redeemer. You're the one that purchased us. You called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. I will submit today, all oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And we will find that his mercies endureth forever. Father, it's in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that you will open the windows of heaven. That you will pour out blessings this morning, Father. That our eyes will be enlightened. That our hearts receive what we believe Holy Spirit is saying to the church today. And for that we give you praise. And much thanksgiving. And all the church said amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. You may be seated this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. We have been endeavoring to seek God about how he would lead us this year. And the mandate for the church in this 2023 season is that of refreshing and restoration. I I'm going to ruffle some feathers this morning. And the ruffling of the feathers might be something that may not wholeheartedly agree with you and how you think. And I've been wrestling with God in this wise of whether I should even make mention of it. But I believe that God will give me leeway this morning. And what I want to impart with you this morning I want to talk about the purpose of the refreshing. And the thing that I have been pondering over simply is that God is not saying anything new. Wait a minute, preacher. There is no fresh word from heaven. Wait a minute, preacher. We're in a new year, we're in a new month, we're in a new day, but God has already said what he said. He's not doing, he's already done. Yeah. Understand that God is who he says that he is. Now, I'm not limiting God this morning. But I believe that what God is saying to us as a church is that we must be better stewards. Yes. Over what he's already said. Amen. We always want this fresh word from God. I, I need a word from him. I need to hear from God this one. I need a word. He said, but what have you done with what I already said? That's good. Again, I'm not limiting God. So don't send me any letters. Don't send me any emails. Don't text me. But the premise here. Is that what we're waiting for is something that I've been pushing here for the last year or so. And it's simply this, is that manifestation. Yes. We're waiting for things to happen in our lives. But manifestation is when earth comes into an alignment with what heaven has already declared. It's like having a, a, a beautiful camera, a, an expensive camera that has adjustable lenses on it and as we continue in the word of God as we continue to look for what God has already said is fine tuning the distance between heaven and earth mm. and when it comes into perfect alignment manifestation takes place yes, the thing you've been waiting for finally takes place but what we should desire to see is what God has already said and that here's the thing that the new thing should be simply this. It's the new revelation of what God has already said. 
So as opposed to us wanting a new word from heaven, no, what we need is new revelation. Yes. Revelation of what God has said, that he will make known unto us the riches of his glory, of what heaven has already declared. Fresh revelation, fresh manna from heaven. What we must needs do as the body of Christ, we have to come up. We have to raise our level. We got to come up to heaven's level. We need to, as we say, step up our game. We must needs have an ear to hear what the Lord is saying to the church today by revelation of the word of God. Again, of what God has already spoken. Now, the purpose of refreshing, it is to bring us the current day church out of her stupor, to bring her out of that sunken place, to bring us out of our spiritual and physical exile. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, I need you to turn to our base scripture, and it's in Psalms chapter 126. In Psalms 126, the scripture declares, beginning at verse 4, and it's in the Passion Translation, the scripture declares, it says, Now, Lord. Let, let's pause right there. Now is when? Now, as we've taught, is always now. Now is not later. Now is now. It says, Now, Lord. Let's pause again. Lord, wait a minute, that, that, that's relational. Lord says, I, I, I've, I've given my life into the hand of another. I've given someone else mastery or to be a captain over my life. Yeah. So we have to understand that this scripture, that this, this Psalms chapter 126, it's relational. It says, now, Lord, do it again. Ha. Restore us to our former glory. And the scripture declares, may streams of your refreshing flow over us until our dry hearts are drenched again. It denotes, it denotes that if he's done it before. Mm -hmm. That word again, I love, if he's done it before, that means that he will do it again. Glory to God. And, and the, the way that he showed me is like having a bucket and you have a sponge in one hand and that sponge is bone dry. And you take that sponge and you smash it down into the water until it becomes soaking wet. And you bring the sponge up until it's drip dropping, dropping full of what you soaked it in. Do it again. Yes. If that sponge dries out, slam it in the water again. Uh -huh. God, do it again, yes. Jesus. Psalms 128, it, it's, it's, it's one of the 15 psalms I'm teaching today. It's one of the 15 psalms of ascent. It's one of the 15 psalms of degrees when the Israelites, when they were approaching Jerusalem. Which is believed that these were the psalms that they were sing when, as pilgrims, when they were traveling to and from Jerusalem for the major Jewish festivals. It's a prayer of restoration asking God to return the fortunes of the people of Israel. They were in this state of anguish. Are you walking with me? They, they, they called upon Jehovah Eliashib. They called upon the Lord of refreshing and restoration. Well, what, what was this state of anguish? What was the issue that the Israelites were hanging? Well, the children of Israel, they had been taken into captivity. They had suffered and they faced powerful and cultural pressures of foreign lands. But somehow, somebody say somehow. Somehow they kept their national vigor. They kept their religious identity. I recognize that we're in the month of February and it's Black History Month. Hmm? It's important for all of us as a people to keep our identity. Especially when others are trying to expunge and others are trying to extinguish our history and trying to extinguish our culture. I'm not using this, this platform to boast anything. But if you don't know your history, if you don't maintain your history, if you don't teach your history, somebody will take it from you. The children of Israel, they understood this. And the Bible, it teaches that outside of Israel's first deliverance from Egypt of their enslavement, 
there were two occasions, biblically, of their captivity. One was after the destruction of the first temple, that was in the 6th century BC, and then the second time was when this, in the temple uh, was destroyed in 70 AD. But while they were, the Israelites, while they were in exile, the Jewish leaders, they supervised their communities. But it was the prophet Ezekiel, among other prophets, who kept hope alive, if you will, of one day returning home to Jerusalem. Notice there is this lecture that's being given here that someone must keep the fire burning. Isn't that all right? That there's this, this, that there's this an item called a thermal coupler. You know what I'm talking yeah. about. A, a thermal coupler. Let, let me see if I can explain this for you. See, there, I remember uh, Pastor Carol and I years ago, we had moved into our home and everything was fine and dandy. And throughout the years, some, some, I remember it had gotten pretty cold outside and, and, and there was no heat in the house. And I mean, you go to the thermostat, you turn the thermostat up, it's calling for heat. You know, it's, it's pretty cold. I said, it's below freezing outside. So, of course, it's cold in the house. No heat. Hmm. No heat. Hmm. I was a little mechanically inclined at the time, and I, I, I didn't know what else to do. So, what I do? I, I, I called my father-in-law. Glory to God. I, I called Pastor Carol's dad. He became my dad. And as a matter of fact, today would be his birthday. Amen. And so we recognize John Sherrard this morning. Amen. And we thank God for it. Amen. Praise God. But this thermocoupler, he says, Sonny says, have you checked the thermocoupler? I didn't know what a thermocoupler was. Well, he explained to me that the thermocoupler, that its purpose, what it does is that it keeps the pilot lit. It, it, do I have anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. See, see, y'all thought yeah. those of us down here in the South don't know anything <laughs> about radiated heat. You don't know anything about a furnace, but when you live up north, yes. you, you must needs have this thermal coupler, and what it does, it keeps the pilot lit. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's believed here that we have to understand that we must be that thermal coupler. We must keep the fire of God lit in our lives. Yes. Glory to God. Yep. Well, it's believed that it is in this period where the Jewish synagogues were being set up. During time of exile. Why? Because they no longer had the temple to go to. They no longer had the ability to go on the Sabbath and on their religious days. But those who returned in their faith to God, they gathered in one another's homes and had worship. They had ecclesia. They had church. These became places of worship, of praise and education and instruction. But see, when you have deviated away from God, one would hope there would be at least a flicker, a, a thermal coupler doing its job to keep the pilot lit. Something that remains alive on the inside of us, reminding us of the goodness of God, bearing the question, how can I stay away from the one who saved me? This term exile. It means it's one who has been forced out of their home, forced out of their country, and now living elsewhere. Somebody say elsewhere. Elsewhere. Forced out of position in God because you no longer agree completely or see eye to eye with God. Operating on your own terms, exiling yourselves from the love of God. Somebody say danger, 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 danger. 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 The, the reason for Israel's exile was because of their idolatry. Yep. Don't you remember, child of God, when God took his finger and he began to write on the tablets of stone? He wrote on the tablets of stone when he gave the law to Moses. He says, thou shall have no other God before me. Israel, they chose other gods before the almighty God. They, they failed to follow the instructions from heaven. Yeah. They made other things their yeah. gods. G-O-D-S. Other priorities became their G-O-D-S. Other pleasantries became their G-O-D-S. Comfortability became their gods. Today, we the church, we must shake herself from this apparent paralysis. Yep. 
Those of us who are ill of this dilemma must find our current location and realize that so many of us are outside of the geofence of God's grace. A geofence is a geographic boundary. It is defined by a global positioning system. It's a radio frequency identification tag. It's a part of technology that what it does, it enables software to trigger a response when a mobile device enters or leaves a particular area. When the last time you received an Amazon package? Anybody recently? Yes. Yeah, how, how many ever had a garage delivery? Anybody? Anybody? See, what happens here, there's something called a geofence that's around your property. So when your driver arrives, his device, it puts him, he cannot do anything, he cannot deliver that package until he enters into your geofence. And once he enters into your geofence, now he has access. That now he can push the button that says open for your garage and take his package and place it in your garage and then hit close. But once he steps outside of that geofence, he no longer has access. Don't you know that many of us who have a ring alarm or any other type of nest, what have you, that you can set your alarm automatically. That when you leave your home, once you get outside of your geofence, it will automatically alarm your house. That's right. Once you're coming back home and you get inside that geofence, it will now disarm your house. One of the things we have to understand, child of God, is that Psalms chapter 91 still declares this. It says, he that, abide, that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The most dangerous place for any of us is to be outside of the geofence of God's grace. Amen. Amen. Yes, his grace is sufficient, and that's true. But child of God, we've got to stop playing with the grace. Come on, say that. I know that we're Amen. under grace, but we've got to stop playing with the grace of God. Say that. When we fail to agree completely with God and with his word, we're on a very, very slippery slope. I promise you, child of God, that you are circling the drain and you will slip into exile. Wow. Wow. Fade away into the black and discover that apostasy yes. is on the way. Yes. It's when you replace God's word with your own word and you become your own God. And idolatry will be your dwelling place. Your lifestyle and your outlook on life will begin to change. For the children of Israel, hardship came for them and loss was experienced because they did not adhere to the cry of the prophets of God. They warned them of their demise. They warned them of their destruction. That God still has his prophets in the earth today. And I believe that even at this time frame across the globe, no matter where they are, that preachers of the gospel are reminding people, reminding those of us that are here in church, those that are across the globe, that we still have to remember that God is still who he says that he is. Yes. That God will still do what he said that he will do. That God is still sending his messages through the prophets and is in the preacher. Amen. Amen. We must take heed to what God is sharing with us so that we won't circle the drain. Are we getting the manna that we need today? The fresh, again, revelation of God's word. I said I was going to ruffle some feathers now again. Again, God can do what he wants to do and say what he wants to say and, and however he wants to say it. But I believe that today that God is saying you need to be a better steward over what I've already said. Yes. Amen. Or do our ears grow tired of the calling of God upon our hearts? Unassisted, you can shut your mouth. Unassisted, you can close your eyes. Unassisted, you can close your nose. Well, brother pastor, what are you saying? Well, let's have an experiment. Everybody take a deep breath in and hold it. Now, next time. Everybody breathe through your nose and hold it. Now, exhale. Everybody close your eyes. Now, open them. Everybody close your ears. Unassisted. You can shut your mouth. You can close your nose. You can close your eyes, but you cannot close your hearing. By design, God made us that we're all 
always listening. That, that, that the Spirit of God is, is acting like a Bluetooth device waiting for to be able to make that connection that is waiting to shake hands with you. That that Bluetooth connection from heaven wants to be able to, for you to be able to hear and to understand what God is saying. Have we grown tired of understanding that the call of God is still in our lives? But brother Pastor, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm beyond all of that. I'm too well educated. I, I don't need all of that. I, I can do this on my own. You're circling the drain. By faith and action, we must intercede. That's our responsibility. For our brothers and sisters who have decided to go their own way. Amen. Again, get back to the wall. Get back to your assignment. Do not grow weary of, of hearing what God has to say. He's constantly speaking to our spirit man. He's refreshing us. You know, many of us during these last couple years have left our post. I said a few weeks ago, you need to get back to your deaconing. Get back to your ushering. Get back to your ministering. Get back to your eldering. Get back to what God has called you to do in the church. Brother Curtis, I remember in the military that, that you could not leave your post until you were properly relieved. Nobody relieved you from your post. Get back to what God has called you to do until you have been properly relieved. Amen. We need to understand that God has us in position on purpose. Heaven is depending on you and I to be, again, that, that, that beacon, to, to be the thermocoupling to ensure that the flame of God stays lit. In Psalms 126, it gives us the image of streams in the Negev desert. It's used as a metaphor to God's power to bring life to a dry and a barren land. The dry stream beds in the Negev are used as a symbol for the Israelites of their current state of their hardship and their emptiness. A place where those who've made conscious decisions to be exiled from the house of God. This verse is interpreted as a prayer for the restoration of the fortunes of the people of Israel. And it's requesting that Jehovah Eliashib, the God of refreshing and restoration, to bring back their prosperity. To bring in their streams from the desert, if you will. Well, Brother Pastor, why you always talk about Israel? I talk so much about Israel because Israel is our example. That's right, they are example. How many of us have older brothers and sisters? How dare us make the same mistakes that they made when they have been the example. Israel is for our learning. Israel is for our teaching so that we don't have to make the same mistakes. So we don't have to circle the dream, if you understand. Psalms 126 is to encourage us, the church, to trust in the living God. To trust that he will refresh us. To trust that, that he has our best interests at heart. And I will surmise to you that that may seem a little dim, but I got some hope for you this morning. Glory to God. If you would turn to 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, this is the blessing, this is the hope. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, the scripture declares, Then if my people who are called by my name belong to me will humble themselves. If they will pray and seek me, my face, my, and stop their evil ways. I will hear them from heaven. Oh, that's good. I will forgive their sin and it will heal. And God says, I will restore their land. Isn't that good? I love how the verse begins with the word T-H-E and then. Which denotes to us that something must happen in the previous verses. Previously, Jehovah Eliashib, the God of refreshing and restoration, he descended in a cloud to the newly built temple. Which King Solomon, the son of David, had built. And this offers, he then offers this prayer of dedication. But listen, listen, this is what he says. In response, God appears to Solomon and this is what he does. He promises to bless the people of Israel as long as they followed his commandments. And also to worship the one and true God. But, somebody say but. but. If they turn away from God. 
he will allow, somebody say allow. allow. He will allow their enemies to conquer them and to allow them to go into exile. Again, our prayer is that our families and friends that are in self-exile will return to the household of faith. That the body of the Lord Jesus Christ to the church, his bride, because Jesus, the Christ of God, is coming back for his bride. Yes, he is. Jehovah Eliashib, here's what we desire, that he will restore us back to our spiritual prosperity. Restore us back to our financial prosperity. Restore us back to our relational prosperity. Restore us in abundance in our lives. And this is what we desire. Will you say that with me? Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Restore us, God. Make in the present what was done in the past. Restore us. Refresh us by the word of the living God. Give us the revelation from heaven. Give us a fresh understanding of what you already said. In Jesus' name. Come on and stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Do it again. He's done it before and he will do it again. Glory to God. Come on and let's say our confessions of restoration, of refreshment and restoration. Come on and say this with me. Jehovah Elisha has already decreed his blessings over my life. Showers and streams of God's refreshing flows over me until my heart, my dry heart is drenched again. My law of faith is on the fire. I kindle the flame of God's word in others that they come out of their exile and their apostasy. I am called by God's name. I have turned from my wicked ways and I seek God's face. I am forgiven. I am the healed. And the land is healed. I further decree that Jehovah Eliashib is the God of my refreshing and the God of my restoration. In Jesus' name. And all the church said amen. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on and put your hands together this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. With every head bowed. And every eye closed. If you're here today, or if you're watching and you've never received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and say, or if you need to rededicate your life back into the Lord, will you just say this simple prayer with us? Dear Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner and I need to be saved. I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus. I believe in my heart unto righteousness. Father, I believe that Jesus died for all of my sins, past, present, and future. I also believe that you raised Jesus from the dead on the third day and that he is seated with you in heavenly places. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for loving me. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. We believe that salvation truly is that simple. There are no more hoops to jump through. We're not going to confuse the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation is simple. God says that the day that salvation shows up at your house, he says, harden at your heart. Glory to God. Glory to God. We're going to have Holy Communion this morning. Right before communion because he wants your heart and your spirit to be right before God. If there are needs and there by there being needs, I, I feel myself a little by there being needs and desires and wants from God, and you don't and your your heart and your spirit aren't right with God, yeah. there's a block there. You know what I'm saying? You want that door to be open. You want the world to, it to be a runway. See, I want I want it to be a runway with me. Lord, 
He said, his grace and his mercy, oh, they trying to overflow me. They trying to take me over. Run me down, Jesus. I am here. You don't have to look for me. That's what having your heart and your mind and your spirit right with God is. And I'm not saying be, you know, you're not good from Genesis to Revelation. You don't have to be all that. You don't have to be super holy, you know, this, this. No, no, no. As a matter of fact, don't try to do that. You overstretch it. When you overstretch it, then you can't be as perfect as you're trying to be. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Nobody is perfect. But Daddy wants you as you are. He says, come. Oh, my God. In the book of Isaiah, he said, come as you are. As a matter of fact, he said, you know what, as dirty as you are, come as you are. I'm going to change everything you've ever done. I'm going to fix you and make you whole. I'm going to do some stuff in your life you ain't never seen before. I'm going to make an adjustment in your life. That's what Daddy says to us. He said, come as you are. As a matter of fact, that's what he said. Let's talk about that. Uh, yes. Let's have a talk. Daddy said to you, let's have a talk. You got some problems? Let's talk about it. You got some situations? Let's have a discussion. Something hurting you? Let me, let me, let me know what it is. He already know everything about us. He created us from the top of our head to the sole of our feet. He knows everything we're dealing with. He knows our heart. He knows our mind. He knows what spiritually we go. He knows everything you're going through. If you don't open your mouth, I say this every week, I think Pastor David says, a closed mouth doesn't get fed. That's how it is with God. If you don't bring it to daddy, he knows it's there. He knows it exists. I could, Pastor David could come home and I could have a want or a need for something. If I don't tell him, guess what? It doesn't get done. Trash, trash, birds, trash. <laughs> but very seriously, if you don't open your mouth and then, you know, Give it to the Lord. The Bible says, cast all your cares on God because he cares for you. Amen. So as we go into communion, yes. everybody's heart and mind gets prepared there. Go with that one thing that you need an issue of, that you have an issue with, that you need daddy to fix. We serve a living Savior. Amen. We serve a God that is more than able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above. It said above. It didn't say Amen. believe. It didn't say next to. It said above what we could ask or think according to that word. Yes. So yes. if we have a need, if we have a desire, if we got some wants, if we got some situation, oh, you, today is the day. You I'm all, gonna, you I'm all know. Ask this question. And I know all of our heads were bowed when the invitation was given. But is there anyone that's here that is not born again? We're entering into this holy covenant with God. And if you're not born again, you cannot participate in the Lord's table. We want to make sure that you know that you're born again, that you're born again of God's spirit. The Bible says that many are sickly among them. Many have, have died because they've not discerned the Lord's table. I love how Paul says, he's a latter man examine himself. So you want to just take this time right now to examine your heart. And in that examination, we want to look again at that word re, R-E. It means to do again, to make in the present what was done in the past. Refresh our heart, restore us, God. He says, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. We don't want this to just to be just commonplace as it takes place in this holy communion before God. It's a sacred time. Hallelujah. In Matthew chapter 26, the Bible says, now as they were eating, does anyone have the elements? Okay. They're being passed out. Thank you. And as they're being passed out, in, in Matthew chapter 26, verse 26, the Bible says, now as they were eating, Jesus, he took bread. And praising God, gave thanks and asked him to bless it to their use. And when he had broken it, he gave it to his disciples. And Jesus had already explained that the body of the Lord Jesus Christ was in the bread. If you have an issue that you're carrying in your body today, you want to make the exchange of your sickness for his health. 
We're making the exchange in our communion. One of the things Pastor Carol and I did for, for, have done for many, many years, when we have an issue that's going on in our lives, we bring it before the communion table. Because it's the holy ordinance of God. You can take communion every single day if you need to. And especially for those of you who are dealing with sickness, I would say to you, the same way the doctor would tell you, take these meds three times a day, you can take th communion three times a day. And pray. And pray. Yes. But he says, as often as you do this, you're going to do this and remember something. We're making the exchange with God. Our sickness and our, our health for his health. It says that he gave it to the disciples. Remember, he already said to, that he broke it. If we want to do, everyone had the elements. And he says, he broke it. Go ahead and break. This represents his body that was broken for you. Your sickness, your disease, your dilemma. And he says, take and eat. Amen. 